All right, I should maybe be live. Uh, I'll give it a moment as always, and then I can get started. Uh, let's see. I mean, look, most looks fine. I'm just gonna double check on the page here, make sure it's all good, and then funny stuff can begin. All right, so looks fine to me. All right, so this is a funny surprise live stream I had some extra time today uh and i wanted to work on picks cards and i'm like eh i can live stream it because <laughs> i haven't really live streamed anything in a while here let me full screen this um and uh i'll, I'll get more into live streaming next year hopefully but right now things are kind of limited but yeah for those who don't know picks cards is my in progress uh multiplayer racing game thingy heavily inspired by mario kart um, so, <laughs> uh, right now this is, I'm just hosting the server locally, so you guys can't join or anything, but, um, okay, yeah, so, if I go around this loop here, around the track, I'll be able to see the other car, but what I want to do here today is to actually work on the visuals, so this is way more decorated than you guys would have seen it like in the last playtest, this map is at least, but I still want to decorate it some more, and then I want to add some hazards. So if, this is based off of Moo Moo Meadow, so I need to add some cows. Um, and then I also want to add like a barn or something. So, uh, also yeah, that was the other, my other uh, self that's connected over here. Um, here, let me pull up the other one as you can see. My CPU is struggling right now. Uh, cause these will take up as much of a single core as they can, pretty much, because I have the frame rate uncapped. Actually, there is a setting to cap it, maybe I should be doing that. But, um, actually I can also drive on this one just to show you, but I can we. But, um, yeah, the, the frame rate is uncapped, so they'll take up as much of a single core as they can. And I only have six cores, so I'm running this, I'm running my avatar, I'm running OBS and my web browser and YouTube and stuff and uh, it, it, it's struggling <laughs> so um, I'm actually probably gonna build a new computer uh, next year like January ish um, and that's also when I'll probably start streaming more and stuff too uh, and then hopefully my frame rate won't tank so normally my frame rate on this is like 300 about and I'm getting like 150 right now because my if I pull up task manager, it's funny. Hold on. It it's yeah, it is what I got right now. One hundred percent utilization. <laughs> it's just dead. Um, it was funny while I was setting stuff up. It was actually dropping down to like twenty FPS because there just wasn't any more processing power to go around. Uh, all right. Is it possible that even with OBS streaming, you get over one twenty FPS with pyramid? What do you mean pyramid? Oh, Pi game. Okay. Um, oh, how is it possible? Um, I mean, this game's not very intense. So there's like an image for the floor, and then there's a bunch of sprite stacks everywhere. But it's like uh, I use like a tile system kind of, so it won't render things that aren't on screen. It's got efficient lookups and stuff. So um, it's not too bad processing wise. I think uh, the matrix transforms are one of the big consumers, and then also just rendering the sprite stacks, because, like, each of these cones, well, actually, no, it's, um, I forgot, I, I've got the sprite stacks cached, so, it's, like, each cone is actually just one image is pulling from a cache of, like, 60 rotations or whatever, um, so it's only handling one image. I also have this weird, uh, layering problem right here, you can see, but that's just because of how I, uh, it, it takes, like, it does like Z sorting on these things, so it has no idea of height. So it's just looking at kind of like the the position of the base of the tree, so the the grass can be on top. But hopefully, if you're actually racing, it won't be too noticeable. Um, I'm not gonna really bother fixing that. Anyways, I'll finish this lap and show you guys the menu, and then I can get to work on actually doing game development. And then hopefully, it'll give my CPU a break because it is not having a good time right now. <laughs> All right. So, oh, something I added since the last playtest is the equivalent to um, doing a wheelie. 
So you can press a button to go faster, but if you get hit, you'll spin out. And then the other thing is also that um, you can't turn as fast. And if you do turn while you're doing it, you'll start to slow down a bit. So uh, there's pros and cons to doing that. Uh, what draws the frame, CPU or GPU rendering? Uh, so it's drawn like in normal Pi games, so it's CPU, but then there's um, a shader section. So like if I go over to Pirate Bay or Turtle Castle, actually no, any of these three, any of them that isn't Moo Moo, um, I'll go to Ghoul Pit. Um, if I go to any of these maps, then it, uh, you can see where the shaders are being used. And the shader is also being used for scaling. So all of the pr processing is done in modern GL and you can see like these pixels and stuff over here. Um, so you can see like the weird pattern outside of the track. That's done with shaders. And why am I missing some of my audio? That's weird. <laughs> Something went wrong with one of my audio channels. I'm gonna have to figure that out at some point. Uh, I'm a bit... No, it seems fine now. Well, no, the drifting sound's missing. That's what it is. No, I think maybe it is there. No, it's fine. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I'm using, like, actual manually managed audio channels now, which is a bit of a hassle, but I can do spatial audio with it, which is nice. Um, and there's also some new stuff in Pygame CE that's good for... Um, spatial audio, but yeah, all the post processing is done in modern GL, which is GPU, um, and got a shader for that. And it's just pretty much one shader that does all of that. Um, yep. Yeah. I can go ahead and yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and close this, and I can actually hear the the engine from the other car because my mute is bugged. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be using that this muting system um in the actual release that's just kind of like a debug thing because when you start up 20 windows and they'll have the audio playing it's really obnoxious um <laughs> but let's see there's a couple other things to show i think so i've got my settings and credits uh lots of settings uh, this, this is where i could it's actually technically not unlimited it is 600 but i can drop it down to 60 and then maybe that'll help. So if I hit play. Yeah, that's better. Hopefully that won't fry my CPU as much. Um, so my plan for today is to start by working on some assets. And I'm going to try using Magic of Voxel. Which I might have to create a tool because from what I understand, they're like um, sliced image export. Uh, it exports everything as one image instead of... Um, separate ones which is what i need so i might need to make a tool for splitting that up but other than that um i'm i'm gonna i mean magic of voxels gonna be a lot more convenient than what i was doing before before i had like here let me pull this up this is funny uh where is it picks cards da, da, da. all right so in here images a sprite look at look at this wait where's the fish i want to find the fish fish f Wait, did I call it something else? Blue bug, BC3, brick, car, tone, dirt. Is it not here? It's not pike. I don't know where it is. Whatever, I'll do car. What? So right now, this is what I currently have. So <laughs> I'm drawing everything like this, which is not ideal. Wait, do I have the tree in here? Uh, it's got an extra E in it. Check out this tree animation. <laughs> <laughs> I drew the tree like this. This is obnoxious. So instead, I'm going to use Magic of Voxel because this is not um, sustainable. I mean, I could keep doing it. It's just really time consuming to do it that way. Um, and then also you're kind of doing it blind. So you, you just have to have a good ima imagination to do that. So instead, I have Magic of Voxel. Uh, and the first thing I want to make is like a barn. So actually, to get a sense of scale, do I have, oh uh, boy, I might want to pull up a screenshot just to get a sense of scale. Actually, it shouldn't matter too much. So I know like how big a car is, and I can kind of do it based on that. So 40 by 40 by 40, that should be big enough. Is there an easy way to just delete this whole thing? 
Can I just like, oop, oh yes, I can. Wow. So I need to get this palette in here. Let's see, palette, no. I've used Magic of Voxel like once and it was 10 years ago or something, I don't know. Uh, let's see, is this for loading the palette? Ooh. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Pix Cards palette, which should be in here. Why does it do it like that? That's so weird. I wish it would sort it. It does not sort it. Uh oh. So I have to deal with the colors like this. <laughs> Oof. Um. So if I go attach, I can like start building a barn, I guess. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, the way sprite stacking works is it's basically 3D, but then you just slice it into layers and you render the layers on top of each other with an offset and you rotate them. Uh, I have a video about it, but yeah, so I can do this and like, whoop. so I need a space for the roof. Um, it needs to be like a traditional barn. So I could probably pull up an, a reference image, barn image. Uh, can Google stop lagging? Thank you. Behold barns. Wow. Um, look at how they're all red. Except for this is a realistic barn. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where the red barn thing came from. Why were they all red? Or why, why are they depicted as red? Whatever. Um, I'm probably going to do something simple like this or something. So I, I'll probably do the the crossed doors maybe i'll open it up so you can see inside a little bit um and then oh something else i'm gonna have to do today is because the rendering system is tile based and it will clip off things that doesn't think are on screen doesn't have any sense of like an oversized tile i'm going to have to create an extra rendering system i think for like just bigger things like barns <laughs> so um I'm gonna, i might have to do that today too so uh, I'm going to have my hands full today, just getting like a barn in, I think. All right. So I might do something like this where the doors are open and you can see inside. Um, I do like the idea of having like a little thing sticking out right there. So because that three dimensionality of it would look really nice in the game, just having a little bit of a roof or something. Because I also have like a shadow system where it will automatically generate a shadow based on the... Okay, I don't know, topography might be the right word, of the um, object, and then it'll place it below. So having like the covered area might look really nice. But So I think this is good enough reference-wise, so I'll read the chat real quick before getting started. Uh, have I considered using complex numbers slash quaternions, depending on how many dimensions you work with, instead of matrices for to do transformations. Uh, quaternions are for um, rotations. Um, and specifically, it it's for, um, it's when your rotations, or, or the easy way to do rotations is like with, I, I, I don't know if it's just called Euler transforms or something or oil or rotations where you just rotate on the X, Y, and Z axis or whatever. Um, and that's the easy way, um, but it has some problems uh, like called gimbal lock where it can basically get, I don't know, it's like kind of stuck and it doesn't interplay it well. Um, but with what I'm doing, because the rotations are only around one axis, there's absolutely no reason to um, do anything other than uh, oil or so there's no reason for quaternions or anything. So I can use like traditional transforms. And the thing with um, quaternions is I, I think usually at a lower level, it will be converted to a matrix anyways. <laughs> um, so the quaternions exist pretty much for, I think, composing rotations and interpolating them um, on a higher level. So at, at a lower level, I think everything's still matrices. Um, and I, there's actually only a couple places in this game that actually use matrices anyways. But uh, what it, when is my next video from my YouTube channel? That will be um, hopefully in a couple weeks. I want to make one about how I've been programming for 10 years. Uh, you just came in, what is Magic of Voxel? It's a, uh, what's well, this? It's like Blender, but for voxels. <laughs> um, yeah. 
So if you saw my thing, collaboration with Blackthorn Prod, uh, I was just using uh, Blockbench recently, um, which is quite nice, but this is not a good use case for Blockbench. This is like specifically for voxels, which works well with um, uh, PixCarts. So uh, I will now have experience with Blender, Blockbench, and Magic of Voxel, which will be funny. Um, will I do engine sounds? There are already engine sounds in the game. Uh, all right. Is this going to stay online after stream? Yes, it will. Uh, would be too much to ask if I put on some chill note on oh, copyright music. I was lazy today. Normally I have some music playing, but um, I'm I'm feeling lazy today, and uh, I I just need to rework a bunch of stuff with my stream setup. Like I'm gonna I'm working on, and if it, this is on my Twitter from like months ago, I was working on uh, updating my avatar because uh, my current ones uh, it's intense performance wise like it takes a lot of processing power to render and stuff and then it also has a lot of latency it doesn't look as good as it could um and the tracking quality is not as good as it could be so i'm working on upgrading that um so and then I'll, i also need to fix my youtube chat thing um this shows up on screen there were some bugs with it i was trying to use it some a little bit i think earlier this year maybe it was last year and um, it kept like getting stuck somehow partway through the stream, so I need to fix that. And then, um, and then I, I want to redo my stream overlay as well. So pretty much everything in my stream I want to redo. And then there's also the problem with music is I started getting copyright claimed by one of the main um, artists whose music I was using, even though they gave permission to use it in streams. Um, <laughs> so. Every, everything just needs to be updated, so I'm just kind of streaming as is right now, even though I don't really have the setup I normally have. I just got my avatar and my plain screen here. <laughs> um, Alright. Search for Voxel Barn. Mm. No, I, I prefer to make everything myself. Uh, it's your first stream watching me live. You're a really big fan of my projects, and I've always inspired you to keep making games with Pygame. Nice. Uh, thanks for checking out my live stream. Although this is, like I said, it's not as fancy as normal my live streams normally are. They'll probably be even nicer than they've ever been. Um, once I get to next year and actually get my setup done. Uh. You got recommended the why you should write bad code video. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Is no, I think my avatar is my th avatar in the thumbnail for the um the the actual video about the avatar. I, I thought the um. Oh wait. Oh, you just when you say character, you mean the actual person? Yeah, the person is uh, Yandere Dev. It's a funny joke. Um. Do you just multiply by delta time or do it accurate for the framework? What? Oh, uh, my framework, I mean, most of the time I just multiply de by delta time. I, you have to be careful where you apply delta time, but I mean, it's mathematically correct to use delta time unless you're doing uh, some nonlinear transforms. Um, all right. How about instead of having separate, having to separate the image Two separate files rather than just load the wait how about instead of having to separate the image to separate files rather than just load it whole and new subsurfaces uh the problem with using one image for the sprite stacking is that um there's nothing that actually says what the dimensions of the sprite stack are to begin with so um, it wouldn't know how many how many times it would need to be split up. So I would have to add some other file, I guess, to tell the game how many layers there are and how many times like that image needs to be split up so that you can um, get your object. So I might as well just export it the way I've always been exporting it as separate images, so it's easier. Oh, uh, thank you for the... Is that 100 pesos? <laughs> Wait, MX100. MX100. 
to USD. What is that? Oh, it is pesos. Ah, thank you for the 100 pesos. <laughs> what program am I using? This is Magic of Voxel. It's uh, basically Vox Blender for voxels. So you'll see it in a moment once I actually catch up on chat here. Um, all right, I'm almost there. The floating geometry is my, I guess, VTuber head or whatever. Um, all right, have I tried using Raylib? I found, I think, a bug in the Python version that's causing some performance issues. They may have fixed it, but I, I actually kind of stopped using it. Like, I tried it out and I was like, eh, because of the, the bug I found. Um, I, I think I mentioned it to someone and they recommended I open an issue and then I just never got around to it. Uh, do the engine sounds change pitch or tempo based on the engine's RPM or car speed? Uh, sort of. They only do it when you actually change whether or not you're pressing the acceleration button, um, and then they stay constant. Um, do the game, oh, well, is this game going to Steam? Maybe later. Uh, and then... I'm, I'm not using Python 3.12. I always stay behind at least a few versions because a lot of times the libraries take a bit to update. So I, I generally recommend... Actually, is 3.12 the latest or are they at like 3.13 now? I don't know. I'm on like 3.8 or something. For the longest time, I was on 3.33 or, so, or something, maybe 3.36. Um, and <laughs> I think I, at some point I was forced to update and I, I'm like on 3. Eight now, I think, or three point seven. Actually, can see. I'm at three point eight point six, so I'm I'm behind a fair amount. So I can actually probably upgrade my Python version and get a bunch of performance benefits. <laughs> Just I have no reason to do it because my games mostly run fine, anyways. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, it's pesos. Hi from Mexico. Love your content. Thank you. I I have um. I, I have not gotten any super chats in a long time. <laughs> All right. So um, let us make a barn because I caught up on chat. Um, so I'm thinking there was that barn I saw where it had that little thing on the side. So I think I'll do something like this. Um, actually, there needs to be a bit of an overhang. I think one pixel of an overhang. So we need on the front. So we can do the floor like that. So the floor is gonna, can you? Oh yes, there's a paint thing, that's nice. So I can just go through and it'd be like, wee. Um, oh, and one of the other things with things like block bunch or blender is you paint on a per face basis. Whereas in Magic of Voxel, it's per voxel. And when you're sprite stacking, it is actually voxel based because each voxel is just one pixel in the sprite stack. So there is no side of a voxel. It's your everything is kind of from the top in technicality. So it's nice that you only paint like the whole voxel. Um, all right, so there there's our floor. I do need the walls. I wonder if there's an easy way to like lift up a shape because. Um, I wonder, actually, wait, I might be able to just like, oh, no, no I don't want to paint. I want to attach. So I think the easiest way might be if I just do, whoop. so if I go up to here like that, and then I erase off the back. This is interesting. There's probably a better way to do this, but whatever. If it works, it works. All right. So I got to do the other side now. Um, it's going to be a long barn. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the dimensions. It might seem a little small. Oh, that's not the right size. Fortunately, just throw on another layer. All right. There we go. And then we need our back wall. So the back wall should be easy. I think I can just do attach and just go wee. Like that. It's crazy. So the barns normally have, well, I'm actually going to just put in the front anyways. Oh, you know what? The, the easiest way to do this would have been to just make a cube and cut out the middle. I need to get more used to just thinking about the, how to make these 3D shapes better. Uh, there we go. So I can cut the door into the front. Um, Let 
need a little bit more space. There we go. Wait, is, that's not symmetrical, is it? Is this it? No, it's not. So the way I'm going to do this is you get the door in the front. It's going to be like popped out kind of. So I'm going to do... So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, four. It's an odd number. Oh, that's awkward. Um, when your doors need to be even, I mean, I could just like no one will notice if it's if it doesn't actually make sense. So I'm just gonna throw down the door. So it, it we'll do six, and um, there we go. Actually, is it better to no? I'm, I'm gonna stick it out this way. I think that's fancier. It's more interesting from a shape perspective. Did I just no? I don't want that there. All right. So we have our doors, so we can paint the colors onto them now. We can go we. Um, I might not be able to do a full X here because I don't have very many pixels. To, oh, very many pixels to work with. So I'm just going to go we. That's good enough. So there's the barn door. Um, I might K on, I don't know what on that means. Uh, make more content for beginners, please. I just did. That's what my, um, big tutorial was kind of, if you're like talking about like beginners, beginners, like with Python, I, I'm not too interested in doing that. Uh, all right. 3.11 should work, free improvements. Uh, yeah, um, from what I understand, I think most of the stuff's ready, like 3.11 wise. Um, but I just haven't updated because I'm lazy. Uh, man, I, I forgot. Like, I was studying Spanish and then I got busy and didn't have time to study Spanish anymore. And then I was going to get back into it later, like next year. Uh, I don't know what Onda means. Um, oh, you're talking to each other. Okay. Uh, for some reason, you have a problem using OpenGL. Even the games you made with OpenGL don't... Wait. My games? Um, if it's telling you that you're... If, if it's like complaining about your OpenGL version... Um, then yeah, your computer might be too old. And <laughs> I think most of my games, actually, you know, some of them I think are like requiring 3.3 .3 or higher. And some of them are like, I think 4.1. Um, so I think usually if your computer is made within the last decade, you should be fine. Um, or at least if it's on the medium end or higher within the last decade, or if it's from the last, like, I don't know, seven years, you should, on any level, you should be fine, I think. Um, so, uh, I think if you're having problems with that, you probably have a very low end computer. Um, what do I think about cave engine? Haven't used, I haven't even heard of it. Um, I feel like the issue with Raylib is that from what I saw, and then this may have changed as well, a lot of the bindings um, made certain things a little bit tedious. I think I was looking at a uh, rotation or something and it looked like it was a pain. Um, it may have changed. I don't know. Um, and there's just a lot of random things where it's like, eh. <laughs> and then I, I might, I don't know. I just don't have anything where I w feel like it would be useful for me to use because I, I already have all of my frameworks and scripts and stuff for Pygame and if I want to do 3D uh, maybe there would be some niche 3D stuff where I would want to use Raylib over um... well no because anything smaller I would just do it from scratch in OpenGL because I know 
the whole graphics pipeline and everything and I, I know how to do like the 3d math and stuff so i can and that's what i'm doing with my next version of the avatar i'm just writing from scratch with modern gl the rendering stuff so i don't have a use for modern gl there because that's like a higher level well i, I don't have, sorry i don't have a use for raylib there because that's like a higher level abstraction that i don't need um and then if i get any higher level than that i'd probably just use godot so this, it would just be some weird niche if it, it's high level enough that i don't want to use well, first of all, it can't be 2D because I just use Pi game probably. Um, and then if it's 3D, it needs to be high level enough that I don't want to use modern GL, but I would also have to have a reason to be using Python specifically. Um, and in that case, I might use Raylib. Uh, but uh, if it's a larger scale and I don't really have a reason to be using Python, I'll just use Godot. Because I already have more experience with Godot than I have with Raylib. So, yeah, it's a weird situation. I think for some people it could be the right choice. Um, especially if you, you're you not <laughs> like me and using Pygame for 2D stuff already. Um, Alright. Make a tutorial for the online racing game. Um, I'll make a tutorial for making online games in general. Uh, hopefully, when I finish my uh, multiplayer framework thing, um, the pix carts of this game is using kind of a basic version of that, and I will be uh, like, <laughs> it is kind of a trial run just to figure out. Does this idea work? Does this idea work? What do I not like here? What needs to be changed? Um, and then f based on that, I will go and uh, make something hopefully a lot better and more user friendly. Um, and then uh, that leaves PixCarts in a weird spot because it's already like the net code's kind of a mess because it's like uh, the, the networking framework is kind of hacked together a bit because um, it's uh for kind of more testing type stuff and just learning um but hopefully the next stuff should be better but we'll see uh if if i do make that tutorial it would probably be next year hopefully maybe mid next year i don't know uh am i making a 3d model and inserting it into pi game yes um i'm doing it with right stacking if you look at the beginning of the live stream you can see what it's going into um all right. Sorry, don't bother with my Spanish messages. Um, I, I do like to try, because I see um, Spanish messages in my chat a lot, and I do like to try to read them, just because I do have, like, I, I was studying it for a while. Um, and then I would like to become, I don't, I wouldn't say fluent, but uh, at some point I would like to be able to just read and listen to Spanish media. Um, because, I mean, I'm from Florida, so... Lots of people around here speak Spanish anyway, so. Uh, like, I can read the, uh, you're interested in game dev, you want to make a game with Godot. I can read, I can tr read that. So. Um, do, oh, I, yeah, I'm using the Pygam CE. I made a video about that, and I I don't use the original branch of Pi game anymore. And they're also behind, anyways. Like so, for with Pixar, it's one of the interesting things is I'm actually using the spatial audio from Pi game CE. So the stuff in Pi game, like just the main branch of Pi game, like it, it can't do what Pi game CE can do. And I'm like I'm getting very tangible <laughs> benefits from um, Pi game CE on this project. Um, like just the spatial audio, it it does wonders for the immersion. Uh, what 3D software? Uh, Magic of Voxel on the top left. Uh, Alright. 4 cores, 3.2 gigahertz should be enough. And any good GPU or integrated no would be enough for Pygame. So the thing with Pygame is pretty much the only thing that matters is your clock speed. As long as you actually have like a spare core, so like if you're, as long as your operating system's not like biting into your resources on a single core, as long as you have a full free core, you can run pretty much anything. Or like it's, it doesn't make too much of a difference. 
Um, I mean, the actual clock speed does matter. So like if it's like four gigahertz or like two, but that's not too much of a difference. Um, anyone releasing a game with Pi Games should assume that people playing the game have a clock speed of, I think 1.8 is a good level to assume. Um, and then on top of that, um, like, I mean, I, in my future projects, I'll be using Delta time so that if your operating system is biting into that 1.8 gigahertz, because for whatever reason, then it would still run. It would just be choppy. Uh, but for the most part, most things should run. Uh, Pygame does use GPU acceleration on some weird stuff. I don't know the details of it. Um, I think, yeah, <laughs> I remember I, I was pointing it out in the Pygame discord, like the old one, not the new one. Um, and People who are working on Pygame were confused as to why that was happening, but for some reason it was using it for something. Um, Alright, you have to... It could be something just on the SDI level where it just automatically tries to use it. Uh, Alright. Alright, uh... You saw my VR horror game and it was awesome. Thank you. Um, if I were to choose another programming language, would you, uh, would I use a, a game engine or raw Vulkan GLFW and SDL? So I wouldn't use Vulkan or GLFW because I mean, just working on that level is too much of a pain. SDL is meant for you to be working directly with more so. Um, so. And that's what Pygame basically is. But uh, the thing is, I don't because of the niche that SDL fills. I feel like it really does work best in the context of Pygame, where you're using it with Py something like Python. So, um, I mean, if I had to use something else, uh, I would probably go to Raylib, maybe, um, or Love to D, or I mean, I've heard things about Mono Game. I don't know if it's any good. But uh, my preference is to not use engines if I'm not doing 3D. But yeah. Am I a full time game dev? No. Um, if I lived in a different country, I could be. <laughs> uh, but right now, I'm in my last semester of school. I'm graduating in a couple weeks. And then I'll be a um, full time software engineer. I mean, I'm already working part time as a software engineer. And then I'm doing contracting on top of that. So. Um... All right. If you buy a new computer, you wonder if you can get a CPU which is less than 2.4 gigahertz. Yes, you can. There's a lot of those laptops. Actually, just in general, a lot of laptops you'll see, they'll have like a six or 10 cores or whatever, but they'll all be like uh, 1.8 gigahertz. Actually, I don't know if it's too much of a thing nowadays, but I'm, that's what I was seeing a lot when I was looking in like 2020 for laptops. And I specifically wanted to avoid that. <laughs> uh, but it's a common thing now where you'll see a lot of cores, but the actual individual clock speeds aren't great, uh, which is bad for Pi game. <laughs> but uh, that's just how they're making them nowadays. Uh, all right. You didn't know that I would stream this year? Uh, I wasn't planning on it. Um, this might be the only like remaining stream that I do this year. Actually, no, I might, I might do a bunch more um, in December. So we'll see about that. But um, like mid-December, like before Christmas, and maybe after the first one or two weeks. So may, maybe like one or two weeks in the middle of December, I, I'll get in a few more streams. Um, and maybe I'll throw in a few more in the next couple of weeks as well. But... Um, there's nothing I can commit to right now because things are just chaos. Because like in the last, um, like I think just last week I was having to do like 12 hour days a bunch, and um, I don't. Last week wasn't like fully like this, but I think the week before I I worked like an 80 hour week, um, and then I think the few weeks before that as well. So things have been crazy for me just because I'm trying to juggle, I guess, too many jobs and then also school. Um, all right. Uh, how, how long did I program slash code before entering the game development world? Uh, all of like a couple weeks, I think, before I tried buy game. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I tried, what was it? I started programming in like a, in September 2013. And I think it was October, like late October that I started using Pi game. Um, so maybe a month. Um, all right. 
You're considering Linux, what is a good distro do you think you should look into? Um, I think generally just Ubuntu um, or Debian. It depends what you want to do. If you enjoy messing around with your operating system, you can do one of the like Arch things, like Arch or Manjaro or whatever. Um, but then it, it's you can do some cool stuff with Arch. The problem is that you're going to spend like hours um, every couple of weeks trying to maintain things because things will get updated and things will break and you'll end up with all sorts of problems and um, it, it's just pain. So uh, I, I just use my servers run on Debian, which has been nice. Um, and then anytime I actually need to use Linux for something, I'll use Ubuntu. I would prefer to do all my development in Linux. The only problem is that um, a lot of software I need, like if I want to stream or if I want to make YouTube videos or something like that, is Windows only. Uh, I have not used HLSL. So I, I don't know much about it. Uh, I only use GLSL. GLSL is fine. It's not hard. The hard thing about programming shaders, is I feel like, is just uh, um, understanding the, the pipeline, like the graphics pipeline. So it's kind of external to the shader. And then also just knowing how to, I guess, create different visual effects on a per pixel level, the way you have to do it in shaders. So I don't feel like the actual style of the shader language is the problem. Um, although I haven't looked at HLSL, I don't know if it maybe addresses some of the confusion with the pipeline or not, maybe. Um, all right. Do people ask about beginner Python topics much? You're thinking about doing an education Python stream if there's any interest. Um, the, people do, but I mean, I feel like most of the people watching my channel are aware that they need to have some foundation in Python. Um, either that or they're just not, like, that or they're already aware that they need that foundation and that they don't have it and that my channel is not really the place to get it. But I, I think there there's some demand there. Um, but I, I think there's also just a lot of content in that area as well to begin with. Uh, I think... So if there is one angle specifically with Pygam you can kind of do that I've considered where you um, you package together learning Python and Pygam. That's what, um, what was the name? It was ClearCode. ClearCode, he made a course doing that. And um, his, it looks like he made a lot of money. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will the new modular Python superset be able to boost Python slash Pygames performance. I don't know. I, I don't look into that stuff too much. I, I don't keep up too much with the new changes. We're just In general with Python, I'm not really up to date on all this stuff. I just use it for everything. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, dual boot's nice if you want to um, have Linux and stuff. All right. Yeah, um, I, I was saying Ubuntu or Debian because they they do maintain themselves. You don't have to randomly go and fix things because stuff breaks all the time. Um, they, they generally stay working. Uh, and there's probably other distributions that do that as well, but um, the stuff that people like to tinker around with, like Arch, is a, um, a time sink. Uh... The font size on Magic of Voxels is really small on your 4K monitor. Um, yeah, I don't have a 4K monitor, so that's not a that's not an issue for me. <laughs> uh, are there not tools to handle that? I think Windows might have some stuff for that. Uh, what are these packaging projects? Pine Solar. Uh, how frequent is it to publish a game? for an advanced game developer. I mean, when I get, do game jams, like I'll pump one out in like two days. Um, so it's just like whenever I feel like it, but for like one that I'm selling, um, I mean, right now my, the scope I'm looking at, if I want to sell something is in the scope of like, 
a few hundred hours of work, which is like a few months, uh, maybe a half a year working on a project. Um, so there's a project I'm doing contract work for that um, is like, a, it's like a year long thing. But if I were doing it, if it were my personal project, I would have done like um, maybe six months. Uh, and then like Pix Carts here, this game that I'm working on right now, this is um, maybe like a, the problem is I've had to take a lot of breaks just because of other stuff getting in the way, but uh, realistically it could be like a maybe a three, four month project. Um, and this one might go on Steam. Uh, do I have depth spot for setup? If you're asking about for this project, the, the, no, because there's it's um, 2D faking 3D. Um, but for other stuff, I mean, I've worked with depth buffers. Um, I just, yeah. I, I'm not sure specifically what you're referring to. Um, uh, please make that beginner content. Uh, I, I've I've thought about doing more beginner oriented content or just kind of more content kind of like that um, last tutorial I did because that one's doing really well. It's getting like I don't know, close to a thousand views a day. Um. How did I learn Pygame? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I've mentioned this before. I learned it in the way you shouldn't be learning it, which is just like purely pretty much through experimentation. And it's a very slow route to learn. Um, experimentation is important in learning, but if you're that's your only source, it can, things can take a lot longer because you don't have any sense of direction. Um, so uh, the way I learned is not a great reference. Uh, Experimentation itself does force you to want things a bit better, though. Um, have I considered using Cython number or JIT uh, compiling with PyPy instead of C Python? From what I've read, it doesn't really do much with Pygame. It's not very useful for Pygame, so I just haven't really done that. Um, what am I modeling right now? It's a barn. What do I think of Chunky's on my Discord server? Is that Chunky's asking? <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking a lot recently and he's new to the Discord. I mean, like, there's people in there that have been there for, like, I don't know, five years or whatever. Well, not five years, maybe, like, three years. Um, uh, but... It, I, every time I look in the channels, it's like half the messages are from him. <laughs> um, you meant that when I make per pixel effects in 3D, you should be able to use depth buffers. What? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the use case is there because uh, de depth buffers are for determining and tracking depth, which I mean. First of all, it's automatically used for um, the Z component of rendering. But uh, like the way I've got things set up in this project, it's I'm passing a 2D image or te a texture to post-processing. Um, there's no 3D rendering going on. It doesn't. The only vertices it deals with are the four corners of the screen, so <laughs> um, it doesn't have a sense of depth really. I, I handle depth logically in the shader. Um, all right. Do I know how to program in Java? Yes, but it's been a long time and I'm kind of rusty. All right, I've caught up. That took forever. Time to hopefully make some progress on this barn. So I want to do a roof here. So... First of all, I should probably cut out like a top floor because barns are like that. They have, uh, I think there's a term for it. I don't know what it's called. It's like you get, I'm gonna, hmm. No, I don't wanna erase, attach. No one will notice that it's five across the middle. Oh, wait, wait, one, two, three, four, it's seven across the middle and the windows are eight wide. No one will notice. 
All right. What is the best way to do this? I have to like unclick every time I want to go like draw a new line here. This is a bit weird. Actually, I wonder if maybe it would be better if I just did like a vertical like this and then like that. I think that, that's decent. So you get the waft up here. And then, I mean, realistically, the, the players are probably not going to be able to see this part very well. Can I, like, I don't know if... This is where perspective is useful. You can... Wait, no, not paint. In orthographic, you could not pull something off like this. I think that's correct. I don't know, it's close enough. So we got our top floor here. Um, I can put like hay bales in there. I'm gonna need hay bales. Um, and then I need the roof. So I'm not sure what the best way to do a slope is. So the, the roof needs to be sloped and it should probably be like gray or something. So let's grab a gray. So I can do, um... ooh, there is a rotate thing. Can I just like, is it possible for me to just, how does this work? Uh, wait, no, I think I got to do like this and I, if I go like that, why doesn't that get it all? That, no, almost. So I don't want to get, there we go. So there's a rotation thing or shear. How does this work? Five. What? No. Wait, this is just moving it, it looks like. Rotate. So can I say like X? Aha, there we go. So that will give me a roof. So um, what I gotta do here, I'm gonna switch back to attach and let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. And then if I go right here, this is a, there's gotta be a better way to select this stuff, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Oop. There we go, I got that all. So I can rotate X 45 degrees. Is there a way to like, what is this? What am I doing? That's not correct. What is it? How does this work? So the shear was making the normal, like a slide and type transforms on it. What does this do? Oh, that's what I was looking for. So I can do that. Oh, wait, is this a rotate? Okay, so I can do that. Um, I think I'm a little bit short. I can give the barn a flat top. I guess that'll be fine. So I can, can I copy this? And wait, what did that do? It shifted it. Is there a way to duplicate this? Edit. Is there a copy? What's this thing? Scale, normal axis. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning this as I go here. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, here's a clipboard. Copy box is a C, control C. And base is control V. But for some reason, if I press, well, before it like shifted it, that was weird. So whatever. If I rotate, I can do there. No, wait, that's not correct. I need to, is there a mirror? Oh, uh, yes, there is. X mirror. Wait, no. How do I actually reset mirror mode? Wait, can I just, it, this is, it should be stretched, right? Which means I can just, ah. 
On a lot of things, you can do like a negative stretch, and I don't know, we'll fix it. Uh, oh, flip, here we go. Here we go. So now, I can drop that right there. And I got me a roof. So now how do I deselect? Uh, control D? Control D, yeah. Alright. Why? No, I don't want that. I want... Uh, did I just do it? That's close enough. So I can just, um, wait, no, race. Ooh. All right, we have ourselves a roof and a slight problem. Wait. <laughs> it would be cool if you could, like, can I select by color? That would be interesting. Oh, it does. Okay, so I can do Control C, Control V, and move that back. Beautiful. Ah. Some some things is Control Shift A to deselect, and but it's this, and this is Control D, which in some things Control D will delete things, so it's it's a bit confusing. All right. So more wall. Boop. What's the best way to do this? Because I don't want to like. Because if I, I do it like this, it'll cut through. I don't want that. I mean, I could just do it Minecraft style and place each individual one. It's not too bad. But there is probably a better way to do this. <laughs> Once I get like to the center, pretty much, I can just do the normal placement. All right. Now we have just this section right here, which we do that too, and boom. So now I should be able to, what happens if I just do this? But I don't want that part. I just want like this part. Can I do that? No. Uh, It might be a better way to select that, but I'm just gonna do the thing again. <laughs> Cause I mean, so normally if I were doing this like in A sprite or whatever, I would have to draw these in like 15 different layers anyway. So this is still way faster. Cause I'll be going pixel by pixel pretty much anyways. This is a very big structure that I would not want to have to do layer by layer in A sprite. So it'll probably be taller than most of the stuff as well. But yeah, I'll probably throw this in as like a normal decoration first, and then we can uh, look at adding custom rendering stuff for this type of thing. All right, so we have our barn roughly, and then like I mentioned before, I want the overhang on the side here. So for the overhang, um, we need a slanted roof, some pillars. So the pillars can be like wood or whatever. Um, so the pillars, I'll just do like right here and here. Is that fine? No. Here and here. No, here. There we go. And then if I, uh, eh, wait. I almost got it. Uh -huh. That's one way to do it. Well, no, I missed. I thought it was just like floating for some reason. I, I actually missed. So go up like this and do that. And then I can use the magic wand and be like, oh. I mean, no, that will be a problem. I can just do this instead, though. I just do Control C, Control V. And then we move it around, we, and then grab all this. Actually, we need to make sure it's level. Ooh, it's gonna be tricky. Uh, right about there, I think. Right, something like that. No, 
Lee? Yeah. Is that level? I think that's level. All right. So now we need our... Oh. Unfortunately... Oh, wait, there's a layer system in this, isn't there? That might be um, useful. But it's a bit late for that. Let's, um... So I can grab the roof, and then I think what I can do... Let's see if I can figure out a way to do this. So if I do this, if I bring it down to here, like that, and then... Wait. I am suffering from the stupid. So if I uh, bring it down like that, and then if I just like deselect it and then grab it like that again, because I don't want the stuff that I just shoved off the thing. Um, I can flip it on the Y axis and then and go boop. Yeah. So I might want to squash this a little bit. Like that. And then I can go. I'm going to have to move those pillars inward. So I'm going to leave this right here and I'll put it back later. Actually, I can just like stretch this, right? So I can go we that will fix my problem. It might look a little bit strange, but I mean it's it's uh this is gonna be sprite stack. No one's gonna care or notice really if the layers are not consistent. Alright. So control D. Wait, that just There we go. So we've got that. Now I can do the hay inside and I can start texturing, but first let me save this. Uh, Pix carts, data, images. I'm gonna make a magic of voxel. Barn. There we go, we got ourselves a barn. So yeah, I need to add the hay inside and then I'll, I'll do a little bit of hay and then I'll look at um, chat. So we just like, I don't know, mounds of stuff. It didn't have to be too fancy. You're realistically not going to be able to see most of this in the game because of the way Stuff is going to be set up. All right, so you just do that, and then maybe put a little bit like up by the window here, and then hopefully that will be visible. So you just do that, and then so what it'll be, look like in the game is you might see it like from this perspective, so you'll see like a little bit of stuff. So maybe I'll put, oh, not like that. Oh boy. So, yeah, maybe just like that. And then I'll put like a little bit there. No one's going to see that, though, I don't think. So there's our barn. I'm going to have to do texturing in a moment here, but I'll read chat first. All right. Am I going to switch to SDL3 instead of OpenGL when it re-releases? Um, I'm guessing there would be like a Pi Game 3 at that point. So I, I don't know. I would assume it would be better. Or it depends on how Pi Game Three would be done, or if, like maybe there's like a Python bunding at all. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't switch to it if there's no Python bunding, because I mean Pi Game is working pretty well for me right now. I don't have much reason to switch. Um, Python dynamic types annoy you. You never know if something's a float or a string. Also, integer accelerated stuff won't cause Python only to use. Because Python only uses floats. What well, won't work? Because Python only uses floats. Um, so, I mean, 
dynamic versus static typing is kind of like a preference thing. If you're used to dynamic typing, I feel like you can work a lot faster than people who um, are using static typing because you don't have to type those things. And there's other stuff you can do with type swapping where you take advantage of the fact that you can switch the type of a single variable during runtime um, to also get stuff done faster. And also just like, uh, there's some, I guess, generalization stuff as well where you can generalize things in certain ways because you don't have to be concerned about types um, that will save you some time. So it's a preference thing. If if you um, like being able to look at something and tell that and uh, know the types you're looking at, then maybe you should be using static typing. But um, I, since I've started programming with dynamic typing, um, I'm comfortable enough with it that it doesn't bother me that, like, I can usually look at something and tell the types based on what I wrote. If you're working with other people, it can be a bit of a pain, which is why people started adding types to Python. <laughs> Um, but if you're working by yourself, having no types, is, I feel like is very convenient, which is great for game development, like solo game development that I do. Uh, did I play some of the Pi Game Community Halloween Game Jam games? No. Um, I would like to do one of the Pi Game Community Game Jams at some point, but the problem is, is just um, they're kind of at inconvenient times for me, and just in general right now, I've been super busy. I was going to do the last Alvica Jam, but then there uh, <laughs> that collaboration with Blackthorn Prod popped up, so I had to do that instead. Um, you watched a video I made two years ago and saw that was live. Uh, there's like two videos I made two years ago that are getting a lot of views, or no, the two years ago one has to be the, um, had to actually get a game dev one, I think. And the other one that's getting a lot of views right now is the one um, about how to code almost any feature. So I have like three videos that are bringing in a lot of views right now. It's it's um, those two old ones and then the, the Pi Game tutorial. That's where like half my views are coming from right now. Uh, all right. What am I making right now? I'm making a barn for the racing game. If you look at the beginning of the stream, you can kind of like look back at that. It, it You can see um, what the game looks like. Hopefully I'll have this in the game soon though. It's almost done. Uh, you have my devlogs. Thank you. Uh, Magic of Voxel interface didn't look like this last time you used it. Yeah, I don't think it looked like, like this last time I used it either, And that, but that was like 10 years ago, so I, I wasn't expecting it to look the same. <laughs> um, is this going to be a commercial game? I wouldn't sell it, uh, but I may like release it on Steam or something. Uh, if people really like it and there's a lot of people playing it, and the server costs are becoming a problem. I might add like cosmetics or something um, because I don't want to be losing money trying to run this thing really. Um, the game is like 2D, but uses sprite stacking. So I can take like a 3D model like this, slice it up, and then throw it in the game. Uh... Did I post a level editor for uh, the Bullet Dodger? Okay, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I, a lot of my games are Bullet Hell, so um, could be a lot of things. But uh, generally, I don't post my level editors. I do have my one of them on Patreon. I know that. Actually, maybe maybe multiple on Patreon. Uh. Is practicing leak code problems necessary to make any software interviews? It depends on the country. Oh, it's not country, uh, company, but also, I guess, country. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's mostly the U.S. that cares about leak code. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it depends on the company. So, I mean, I have not had to do, in all of the interviews I've had, uh, which is three. Wait. So what a third? Nah, it depends on what. You, for all the companies that I've been a candidate for, because I've been hired without interviews before, um, and that's actually the company I'm gonna go work for after I graduate is one, the uh, a company that hired me without an interview. But um, every company that I've been a candidate for, uh, they did not ask any leak code like questions. Um, it may be just because they can look at my resume and tell that they don't need to. Um, and it, I mean, I can make things, obviously. Uh, 
So they're looking for, I think, some kind of problem-solving ability there. But the problem is nowadays is that a lot of people have memorized most of the leak code stuff. So it's more like, it's kind of like, it's in a similar vein to do you have a degree where it's like, did you go through all these random tasks that uh, may or may not have a purpose just so you can get a job? Um, so it does show something about you, um, even if you went and just memorized it. But uh, it may not be quite what they're looking for, which is why I've heard that a lot of even like the beer tech companies like Google are trying to get off of the leak code stuff. Um, so I think it's a weird thing where some companies do it, some don't. It depends. Um, so you can definitely, since there are plenty that don't, there, you don't have to know that stuff, but, um, I mean, I can look at a lit code problem and oftentimes, like, I mean, even the hards, a lot of times I can, uh, figure it out pretty quickly. Um, so being able to do those problems is, I feel like, um, somewhat important, uh, just understanding how to handle data on that level. Um, it's not... The thing with leak code is it does depend a lot on data structures. Um, although I feel like most of the problems on leak code can, or not maybe not most of them, but a lot of them can be solved with hash maps and uh, or, which in Python is dictionaries. And if you're you get an actual job, that um, it's even more so that you just really need hash maps or dictionaries for almost everything. Uh, <laughs> And maybe if you're getting into like database stuff, you need to start thinking about binary search and stuff like that, because um, that, that plays into indexing and stuff. But uh, I mean, there, there's really not too much important there. So the, the important thing is, do you know how to just code things in general? Uh, why in 3D? Why not in 3D? <laughs> this is going to be turned into a sprite stack in a bit. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm interested in making a tutorial of how to host my game on a cloud server. I'm not sure what you mean by cloud server. If you just mean like a rented VPS, um, I can probably do something like that when I do the tutorials for like multiplayer. Uh, the thing is, is that that would also be waiting on just my multiplayer for it to be done. And then also, I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, um, kind of. I guess the, the case I have is kind of the most basal case where it's like you have a server, you can SSH into it, run these things, boom, you got your server. But I mean, it's not too complicated. You put your code on there, make sure the ports are open and you're done. Although I'm running my stuff through something called Nginx, um, which will handle routing so that I can have a bunch of stuff going on at once. New Super Potato Bro update soon? No, I'm not planning on updating that at all. <laughs> all right, I need to use a restroom and then I'll come back and finish this model and we can get in the game. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. As always, I do have to wait for my avatar to catch up because uh, and that's one of the other things that I need to actually fix with the newer version is that there's this weird thing with my current avatar where it'll it has some weird thing with the buffer where it'll get behind by like, I don't know, 15 seconds or whatever, and it'll catch up slowly over time. Um, it, and that'll happen whenever I walk away from the camera. So um, I'm waiting for that to get fixed here. You can, it's funny because I can see it like playing back faster, um, but it's almost caught up. Um, all right. 
The most basic server stuff can provide a barrier for most. A tutorial of any level would be invaluably useful. Um, so, I mean, I could do stuff about just kind of like SSHing in and then, uh, I don't know, putting, getting your files there, running it, I guess. Um, maybe I could do something explaining how to use an Nginx for proxy, well, as a proxy server. Because um, you can route stuff through it and do some other fancy stuff. Um, but I think by default, most of the ports should be open already. Maybe. I don't know. I think it depends on what VPS you're renting. Um, for me, I think I can literally just get a server, and as long as I can SSH into it, just SSH, drop my file, run it, done. And then just connect to the IP address. But I mean, yeah, I guess I can make a tutorial showcasing that. Um, all right. Let's see, my avatar should be fixed. Yeah, it's caught up. Let's get it back. All right. So what? Let's texture this thing. So a barn roof. What does a barn roof look like? Barn roof. So the, some of them will be like, um, they'll have the metal sheets and then some of them will have shingles. The newer ones have metal sheets, it looks like, and the older ones are shingles. So I'm leaning towards the sheets because that's easier to draw. Yeah. So let's do metal sheets. So for that, just do some highlights in here. Well, first of all, we're going to have like a little bit of a shadow going on right here. From up here. So I'm going to want to get that. And then I can do, I don't know if I want to do like, um, here, let's just do like this. Oh, that's nice. I can just do a nice stroke down there. That's nice. All right. So I can do this, and then maybe I like switch between ones and twos. Like this. It's an interesting pattern. All right. Almost done with this part, and we can see how it looks. I also want to um, do some of this in this shade as well. Ooh, that's. Uh... There we go. So there's the roof. So um, I think I can also do that, maybe. And then I think normally the edges are going to be color, so I can do that. Gonna switch back to the darker color and add that in. It's gonna be a really weird pattern. That's fine. Alright, so I can also go in here in the shadow and pull these in, which makes it look more like a shadow and less like a someone drew some black thing on top of the roof at a random location. Alright, so I can get. This one done, and I can move on to the rest of the roof here. So this should also shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I think I'll just copy the pattern pretty much. So you just go, whoop. Oh, that's, um, I didn't think about that. So because of this, if I do that, it'll actually cut through. It's awkward. So I might have to place these one at a time. Um, and then what I'll have to do is, well, wait. I think later on I can do this normally because there's no things in the middle, maybe? There's no voxels in the middle. All right. So from here, 
Can I do this? Oh, and that's the other thing. I got to do it like a, as a triangle. So I go up to here. And then I can go down to here. It does color the walls a little bit, but I can go through and fix that. It's not too bad. Um, all right, so I can just keep going with this pattern. Actually, I'll just do this one side first and I'll copy it over. We. Almost there. And then I gotta switch sides. Alright. So that is that. I do need to do this part too. Ah. Sleepy. Alright. Now let's sign. And I might want to do some like uh, edge stuff. And then I also have to clean up the walls under the roof where it got included in the um, painting. All right, so let's fix up the, ooh, yeah. So I'll fix this up here. So we got, I think I can just go across like this. I can just keep doing this. All right. And then for this part, oop, that'll get it. And this part, right. here we go. There's a little bit of something going on in here. Uh, there we go. Now I just want to do the edges. So I just grab these. I don't know if I want to do anything on the top though. I can probably leave. Oh wait, no, there should probably be like a little bit just going down the middle where it's like that. But then other than that, we're good. So, and then there's the issue of texturing the barn itself and the floors and the pillars. Um, I might be a little bit sloppy here. So here's what I'm gonna do. Boop. Mm, boop. That'll get the shadow there. And then I'm thinking literally just draw a couple marks down the side of this thing. And then um, the floor of this shouldn't be too much. I'm just going to do kind of like the front ish. So I'm going to draw a little bit of shading around the hay. And then and maybe some like right there. So I think eh you might see like, it's like a 45 degree angle, so you might see like this much. So I'm gonna do that maybe. And then that should hopefully be good. Um, for the hay, I don't want it to be that golden. So we'll just texture it a little bit. Just draw some little marks all over the place. It might look a little bit like cheese, but I don't care. Cheese hay. Here 
we go. She's hay. There we go. Great. So we got our hay in there. Um, only thing left I can think of um, is the, the barn wall stuff. So we got ourselves a, ooh, what does this turn into? I might have to pull the palette to see what that, what the darker version of this is. Or I can go lighter. So I think this is the next color out, so it's pretty bright. But, um, so this will work. I feel like, wait, can I just like, So make that all brighter and then deselect. It's a very bright barn now, but I want it to be not so bright. So I'm just gonna draw a couple lines down here. As long as my strokes are straight, I can get away with it. There we go. So I did that. Uh, this is a tricky angle. I get it. I got it. And then we're gonna do the back side here, which is gonna be three. I was doing like th steps of three here, um, and then this so was all the way across. I think I had like three layers there. Boom. So I can do some shadows here on those thingies. So I got that. And then I want some stuff near the doors. And then we've got a texture. This is quite the amount of work just to get a barn in. But uh, that's how these things are. All right, so we got, I'm gonna go all the way down to there. There we go. So for the barn, I'm gonna actually put more references and yeah, the planks are on the barn are normally vertical, it looks like. So what I can do is do like strips of two and then Go all the way around the barn doing this, and I think this should be the last step. Maybe I'll add uh, I'll add some more windows, I guess. But other than that, I think I should be pretty much done. So this goes up to here. So close. All right. This needs to go up here. My hand's getting tired. This is a surprising amount of work. This is probably going to be one of the bigger assets used in the game, though, so hopefully the rest of the game shouldn't be as much work to uh, do the assets for.
the tree like took me um and this was without streaming so without wasting a lot of time streaming uh, the tree took me um i think uh over an hour and it's much smaller than this i think so this is a funky situation in terms of shapes there we go so now i do the back so i'm going to do it from here and it's by two, so no matter how I do this, it's gonna have a weird section in the middle because the barn is an odd number of voxels wide. Actually, no, so if I do an odd amount of planks, then that works out, I guess. There we go. So we have ourselves a barn. That's crazy. Look at that barn. All right. I'm going to read chat real quick before I try and stick this in the game. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to have to create a tool, though, for like slicing up the, the um, spreadsheet or the, the, like the whatever thing it generates. Uh, is there going to be any programming in the stream? In a little bit. Uh, you gotta go to school. Bye. Although you're probably gone now. Uh, what would I say are the most important skills a portfolio should highlight on a resume? Well, I'm not the one reading people's resumes for hiring, so um, I wouldn't really know too well. But I mean, if I were looking, um, I would. I think the biggest thing to look for is just larger projects in general. Because what I see a lot um, when I, so just casually, if I look through the portfolios of like my classmates in school and stuff, a lot of times I'll see like a couple really small projects or just nothing at all. So if, if someone even has a project that they put, I guess, uh, more than 15 hours into, or, well, no, I wouldn't say 15 hours because you can sink 15 hours in something pretty easily if you don't know what you're doing. If it, if someone has a project that looks like they put more than 100 hours or more into, then I think that's pretty significant. Um, uh, and I think... Because that, that would imply that they had the interest in the... Um, in, in programming enough to commit to something like that. And they would also have experience working on something larger. Uh, so I, I think that's some of the best type of experience if I, if I had to be looking. Um, but I don't know uh, what the companies would care about portfolio-wise. I think that they would see something similar or look for something somewhere where if they see large projects like that, that will count. they will count that pretty positively. But the problem uh, with resumes in general is that the... Usually it's not even a human reading your stuff first. It's usually um, something scanning for keywords. So um, y focusing too much on projects might n not look, it might get you stuck a little bit on the machines where they're scanning your stuff. Because, um, well, personally, I found out that I've had very positive um, responses from my resume as soon as I knew that a human had actually read it. So as soon as I got in past that first step where the the machines are looking at it um the uh every company i've talked to has been pretty happy with my resume i think um so yeah i think the big part is just getting past the machines if you have bigger projects i think that looks really good um what software do I recommend for Pixar pre creation? I think the general thing is just A Sprite. I, I use MS Paint a lot, but A Sprite's the general answer. Uh, with that small resolution plus the barn itself rotating the sprite won't look noisy in the game. Well, let's see here. So, actually, should have I really should have checked this earlier. Um, Pixcarts data images A Sprite. Let me pull up the tree. So the tree. What are the dimensions on this? Oh, it's 48 by 48. Oh, yikes. This is going to be a pretty small barn, technically. 
it will be a, a, a the barn will be smaller than a tree. It might be all right. So th what I can do is I can just scale it up. If I just two x everything, so most of this will look fine two x. Um, the only thing is the doors and the patterns right here, maybe the hay. So there's a couple of things where I'll, I want to clean up some things if I had two x it, but I get two x this pretty easily. Um, so this is going to be smaller than a tree. I think the tree is like this big but it just might be fine we'll see um because the cars are like so if you actually compare it to the size of the cars this build size building is correct but the question is are the cars mini or not mini <laughs> like are, are they like i don't know are they like a couple feet long or are they actual car size cars um if they're car size cars then this is a decent size barn because the cars are maybe Oftentimes, maybe about the, the length of the, the this front here. So maybe then the barn's just a little bit small. I don't know. We'll see. But I can scale it up if I need to. Like, I mean, there's like a scale thing right here. Uh... All right. Make a cheese Easter egg because of the cheese hay. Um, Easter eggs. I'm not sure how I would do an Easter egg in the racing game, though. Maybe just like put some cheese somewhere random on the map. But I don't know. Uh, you, you have some magic of voxel. You can export as slices, which is what I'll be doing. Is there any reason I use VSC over Python specific IDEs like PyCharm? I don't like a lot of the integration the IDEs will do with um. Uh, with specific programming languages, I just it feels clunky to me. I mean, I'm happy, pretty happy with the text editor, pretty much. Uh, you're a CS student in like coding Python. Can you make a simple roguelike efficiently by yourself, or is a game engine better? If you're doing a 2D roguelike, I mean, Pygame is fine. It's not too complicated. Um, a lot of the stuff with roguelikes are actually just like coding mechanics and stuff, um, which is where actually the kind of the strong suit of Python, because you can generally speaking, you should be able to code faster with Python than like C sharp for like, getting mechanics in. Um, You gotta go to work. You're a newbie in game creation, but super interested in the stuff. It's amazing what one individual can create. Later, uh, thank you for stopping by. Um, place a piece of cheese in the barn, I guess. Well, I mean, if it's hidden, well, okay. First of all, how would I distinguish the cheese from the hay? Because it already looks like cheese. <laughs> Uh, but also you wouldn't be able to see inside it. It would only be in the files. Anyways, so let's go ahead and export this and see how it looks. So if I go... What was it? Is O slice? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. That's like the old way to do it. It was funny. So I was looking up how to do the... um, How to export this so that I can do sprite stacking with it. Um, cause, well, worst case scenario, I would have to just write my own... Um, uh, code to convert whatever format um, this can export into um, uh, uh, images for sprite stacking. But when I looked it up, there's like one article about how to do sprite stacking, uh, well, export for sprite stacking with Magic of Voxel. And it's written by someone who's, um, there's this guy I met at a programming competition a while ago who's also a game developer. And he, his, uh, he worked on a team for some games, I think. And one of the main guys he worked with turned out to be, I think, the guy who wrote that article. I'm like, bruh. <laughs> uh, it was funny because the, the guy I met at that program competition, it was like that morning I was on Reddit just looking at like pixel art stuff. And I happened to see something he was working on. And, and then I ran into him in the game jam. And, and we, we just happened to be talking and we were showing each other um, our stuff. And then I saw stuff and I'm like, wait, I was just looking at this this morning. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, and it, it's not like super, it, well, he's not super big or anything. It, it's just a crazy coincidence. Um, 
Use Vim for the win. I use Vim for work. Uh, I I don't I don't know the Vim movements very well. I know a couple of things. I know GG. I know how to search a file. Although, I mean, even less, it, it's the same. All right, so let's go ahead and export this. So there's a slice thing. The, there's, that tutorial I saw from the guy I recognized is actually outdated. <laughs> I found that, had to find this a different way. So let's go over um, data images entities. How do I do this? Oh, I think it goes into blocks. So the way this works, yeah. Uh, how do I do the tree? So it's just tree. So I'm going to do barn. And is it like, it gets image and it's zero padded. Yeah. Mm. So the way this is going to work is I'm just going to drop this in here. So now if I go, I'll show you guys what I'm looking at in a moment here. Here we go. So I have my barn here. This is a barn. Look at this wonderful barn. Imagine having to draw this normally instead of, look, yeah, that, this would be brutal. Um, so I need to be able to split this up. I wish, I, I don't think there's a way that I can get this to, there's 2D Sprite. How does this work? No. Barn two. What happens if I export as 2D Sprite? What is that? Oh, that's a side perspective, but it's got like, it tried to shade it. Oh, that's weird. Okay, I don't like that. What are the other things? What is slab? Slab six. Uh, wait. Oh, it has a point cloud thing. That's crazy. My um, brother was trying to get Magic of Voxel to export for point clouds, but um, had some issues. I don't know if he found that or not. All right. So um, doesn't look like there's a good way to actually get this to split. So I'm gonna write a tool to split this for me. Um, yeah, let's do this. So split that pie. And I think we might just use idle here. Uh, do I not have open with? Do I not have idle on my, okay. That's weird, whatever. Uh, so what I'll just do instead is I'll just go over here and images, blocks, nope, not that one, um, blocks, split. So if I go over to, there's like pig pen min, I think here, yeah, this is what I need. So I just do this and I just do. I think I have, I have to have a display to make a surface, I think. Or maybe they changed that recently. I don't even remember. I don't usually mess with stuff this way that often. Let's see. So pygame.image.load and we'll do, um, I'll do import sys and we'll do uh, print, wait, I think it's like sys rv1 pi, well, no, wait, is it two? Let's see. Uh, so here's what I'll do. I'll do print sys to rv1, and we'll see what we get and if I run it. So if I run this, I get an index error. Uh, and if I put ABC, it gives me, okay. So this will be their path here. So path 
equals that. And then uh, layers equals sys to argv2. And we'll take that as an int. So now we can just load our image. Uh, we'll do our path. And then we'll say, oh, we've got to do dot convert alpha, I think, so we can preserve alphas. And then we have to like take the subsurfaces here. So um, layer, wait, no, uh, dimensions equals src image dot get width. So the width is correct. That will be the actual width. And then the height will be the height divided by layers. And then I need to truncate that to an integer. And then now I can do um, clip r equals pygame.rect. And we'll do um, dimensions. And we'll start at 0, 0. And what we'll do is we'll just add to that. So we do for i in range layers, we do clip r plus equals uh, uh, dimensions one. So that will increment it. Or no, that needs to be the y dot dot y there. And then we could do clip off of the src image and grab with our clip r and uh, layers out equals that actually I don't even need I can do it on a fly so image equals that and we're going to do pi game dot image dot save I think it's the yeah it's surface then path so we'll do um, path dot split slash we want to chop off the end which means um, I think like that and then we want to join on that and we add another slash and say uh, image and then we want to zero pad this so we do f string and then I don't think we should have anything that's over 100 pixels tall so I think it should be safe to do um, uh, i02 dot png wait that's not gonna do that right so the F string needs to be over here, I think. Yeah, I think that's correct. So you do the F string there. And let's see if this works. So the barn is 40 pixels tall. Well, 40 layers tall. So it cares about the we care about the layers, not it's everything else is derived from the layers. So I do pi split dot pi and we do barn slash barn dot png and we say 40 layers so this is what i got here ah yeah so you do need to have something initialized so you can <laughs> uh yeah uh, we'll do pi game dot init screen equals pygame dot display dot set mode because this has to be initialized for some reason and then you get down to here and you do pygame dot quit <laughs> it's a little bit annoying that you got to do that but whatever so it popped up a window very briefly and then it closed and we'll see what our results are so we get our barn oh it went top down and then the stuff where can I? That's weird that it decided to make this all black. Is that just because you can't have a fully transparent image, or what, what's going on there? Well, it can't be actually black because if I open Paint, it comes up as white. So I think that means it is actually transparent. Um, now the question is, are the layers top down or bottom up? I think they're bottom up that I was supposed to do. So. Um, let's look at the car. It says bottom up. So the way I have to do this now is I have to flip this order. So I have to go, instead of doing I, I got to do I, or no, uh, layers minus I, minus 
one because you actually start at zero. Um, all right, so I ran it again, and this looks correct, I think. So the question is, how will this show up later? Oh, wait, actually, hold on. Let me try and see if we can. Uh, well, yeah. Hopefully, these layers will not cause problems. Actually, I can just delete them. All right, because they're off the top. I don't need those. All right. So I just have my 32 layers. Um, I think I have to delete this. And then, so that's good. So I have zero to 32. And then if I go over to, I have a thing for editor. Yes, here we go. What, what am I on here? Oh, it even knows. So this is the barn right here. It knows this is a barn. So comparative size, uh, it's a little small. There's also the issue that I can't rotate it. I think I need to add rotating to the editor. Because it's a little bit weird that that can't be rotated. I think for the trees, I just pick a random rotation. It's a bit weird. So let's put a barn right here. Just see, this, see what it looks like. So I'm going to save that. Hopefully, I feel like there's some weird thing that I had to, like where the loading wasn't quite working right, and I, I don't know, and I might have to like go in and fix some stuff if I re-export. Let's see, where is the save to? What is this importing from? What editor? Oh. So it's actually, um, I think it goes straight to here. So this new thing is what I mean. It calls blocks old, old four, and this will become blocks. Um, all right, let's see if this works, and then I will read chat next regardless. But I gotta. Oh, I got so many console things open. I do have to finish a lap, I think. You're gonna hear some of the music. I think I gotta. Well, I gotta finish this track, and then I can switch the maps. Watch there be some configuration thing I forgot, and then I have to like um, uh, go and restart. Actually, it shouldn't be too bad. The, the server is not going to care. So I just have to restart the client, and the server can sit on the map, and I can just keep reloading the client until it works. I wish I were using a different car. I could finish this track faster. Right where? Actually, I don't think it's much faster. It's probably a few seconds, so not a huge deal. Oops. I need to add some shortcuts to some of the newer maps when I get to them later. I'm bad. I'm even worse. That's crazy. All right. I should add an animal stretch barn. I'll, I'll, I was planning on doing cows later. So I wanted to add a barn to the map, and then I wanted to add um, cows in classic Moo Moo Meadows style. I might have to change the, the track name and do some other minor changes to the map just to distinguish it uh because i'd rather not have the game taken down because it's uh i don't know if you can get in trouble Cause, like visually it looks very different from Moo meadows because this is like sprite stacking 2d the layout's the same which is i think the only thing i can get in trouble for because 
maybe the name too, but I call it Moo Moo. I don't call it Moo Moo Meadows. I think legally that's fine too. Um, the problem is, I think, just the layout. So if I just, like, change it a little bit, I think I should be fine. Um, although there's also the thing where Nintendo doesn't care if it's actually legal or not. They'll, um, they'll go after you anyways and just assume you don't have the money to fight them in court. Uh, all right. Upside down barn. That would be funny. Um, what is G29 support? Is it like a type of controller or what? Uh, I'm not doing any like live play tests with you guys yet. I'm, I'm just doing development, but I'm testing it myself, if that counts. Uh, is this an actual 3D? Is this actual 3D graphics maybe a pie game? Sort of. It's like, it's sprites to act as faking 3D. The Discord invite, oh, is the one in the description invalid? That's weird. Uh, look in the description of my other videos, it should be fine there, I don't know. So the barn should be over here, I think. Where's the barn? It's like, right, look at the barn. Okay, yeah, I might need to make that bigger. Let's see if I can see the, the cheese hay. Look at it. It's the cheese hay. Um, I didn't do the hitboxes for it, so they're... Does it have any hitbox? It doesn't have any hitbox right now. So, um, well, here's the car next to... Can I park the car in the barn? Uh, look, I'm parked in the barn. Oh, that's awkward. Um... I might have to add some layering right under the roof there because the diagonals you can see through for some reason. I think that's just how the sprite stacking ends up working. Um, yep. The barn does look nice. So yeah, I'm gonna like double the resolution, I think. And it'll be like twice as big. Um, I can close the other one. I don't need, I only need one open right now because the server will stay on the map. So I can go over here and let's go ahead and fix this stuff. All right, so first of all, so right here, the, this roof is fine because it's double layered. Um, the diag There's no way to, the thing with sprite stacking is that you can actually sometimes see through the diagonals depending on how the math is working out. Um, so what I need right here, is something like right oh no that's drawing i need to attach i need to fill up these gaps right here so these diagonals need to be filled in and that should get it i think actually there's one more right here all right so we got that um, and now we just double everything. So, is there a simple thing for just scaling the whole? Mm, I guess not. So we'll do 80, 80, 80. That's nice. It actually stuck it to the bottom. That's interesting. So now I just select all and we go, I think there's like multiple ways to scale this. So I can go like this up to the top here. Is that is that level? I think there's there's one more. That's level. And then over here we go to the right until the edge. And we do the other edge and we're done. Boom. So that's doubled. So now control D and then I can go in and uh, repaint some of these things to make them look nicer. So this shouldn't be too hard. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth because I'm lazy. Uh, where's the dark brown? Is this the dark brown? I don't think this is the dark brown. Well, let's see. Paint. Oh, this is the dark brown. Okay. So all I got to do 
is just do a little bit of spot work here. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the depth. It is thin. Thin boy. Just like me. Alright, so do that. And there we go. That's proper double sized. So now we can go back to painting. And we can just throw on our random shapes just to get rid of, break up this um, uh, square looking shape. And then do it over here too. And then There you go. So that looks nicer. And then the doors, because these have diagonals, I want these to also um, be cleaned up a bit. So we do boop, boop. Um, you know, it's got to be like I, think I can just extend these and then do that, and I can add. Should be like this. Wait. Where is this not consistent? So it should be like two, two up, one across the whole way, I think. Oh wait, no, it does some weird things because of the height. I think that should be fine. So if I just replicated it on the other side, I'm good. And then, uh, it's looking pretty good. So I can do that. And then up here, these ones are the funky ones where this could actually really use the high resolution. I was having a hard time with these before. Um, so I can just do Boop, 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 boop. Oh wait, these aren't even square. A scam. Um, whatever. Actually, now the trick here, secret, super special technique. You just make it too wide. No one will notice that it's asymmetrical. All right. So now the cheese hay. The cheese hay is going to look a little bit funky. Um, so just like, actually, realistically, you should see like um, strokes in here. So I'm going to, oh, okay, that's interesting. So this is, the paint bucket tool is like a palette swap. It doesn't, it gets everything. <laughs> it's not based on bordering, which is both useful and not a, gonna be a pain at for certain types of things um so now that i have more pixels to work with i can actually make the hay look more like hay that's crazy so um yep we do this stuff oh that's not correct not correct and then So the top should be like all speckly if the hay is pointing up. All right. So 
so you can't see too far inside so hopefully I shouldn't have to do too much here um, make this a little speckly and then boop. All right. Hey, I think you actually could see a little bit of this one, maybe. Just in case I'm doing it. All righty. So there's that hay. So we have this hay up here. That's a bit tricky to get in and get the angle right on that. All right. Now I just detail the tops. And then I should be good. There we go. Oh, missing detail on these. And all right, I think that should cover it. Just about. Oh, uh, the floor, right. So I'm thinking like mostly actually I'm gonna wanna take away cause this is already dark in a lot of places. So um, I'm gonna subtract from this pattern instead of adding to it. There we go. Maybe just a little bit of that. There we go. And just maybe something right there. That will be our floor. And we can save this and go to the slice export. We save it as barn. We run this thing again, but instead of 40, we get 80. And now if I go back to data, we're probably gonna have to move the um, barn around. Hold up. I stretched this too far vertically, didn't I? Uh-huh, I did. That's, uh, so some places like this got became double thick. It's not too much of an issue, honestly, because I didn't even notice it until now. <laughs> but yeah, it should not have been stretched that high. But I can get away with it. So, Let's go ahead and start our pix carts again and let's see if it's looking all right. Hello? Hello? Oh, there it goes. Took a moment. I don't know if that was, no, it doesn't do the network connection until now. So I don't know what was taking so long. Maybe my CPU is just like giving up. All right, so the barn should be over here, right on this curve right here. What? Uh, oh, I know. So there's, <laughs> you know that um, that barn.png, this one, that's just like going across the floor here and making a big old mess. So I'm gonna delete that. Um, I'm amazed that it didn't cause too many other problems, but there's the barn um i'm gonna restart this and we'll see what the barn is doing g29 is a sim wheel it might work so if if it can register as a controller and if the the wheel is treated as like an axis like a trigger basically for a remote or like the um oh wait 
I, I can I, I can check the settings and see if it works. It would probably be registered as an axis. So it would probably work. I'm assuming there's buttons on the front too. But I think it would probably work, yeah. Um, because my thing should be able to work with pretty much any... Anything, I think. So, I'm, I might have to add more rotations to the barn because... Wait, first of all, is the barn floating? Oh, no, that's just the roof shadow. Yeah, I think the, the barn may need more rotations. It's a bit more painfully obvious what it's doing. It does look nice, though. So it will need a hitbox. So there's that. Let's see, does it, like, clip off or... I think it's actually... Oh, wait, no. Hold on. I saw... I saw a funny... Yep, there's the clipping off. So after a certain height, it can, like, clip out off the screen. I might just leave it because it's close enough. It's like a very special case where it clips off. But I, yeah, I, I'm, I do like how it looks. Nice barn. I do want to turn it though, so my editor's probably going to have to be updated to handle turning soon. Um, I'm going to see if how the... Um, Well, so I want to see how this looks full screen, and then, yeah. So I want to see the settings for how many rotations it generates. I need to look at that. Um, what would that be? Would we do I have a thing for blocks? Sprite stack, weird. So I would instantiate a sprite stack, and then I use cache. Yeah, wait, we're going to cache. Yeah, so this the cache says how many rotations do I want to pre-render. So if I just search in here and say sprite stack, and then look where it's used, right here. Aha. If block in, ooh, I should me measure the RAM usage first because that's a lot of large images now that I think about it. Well, first of all, I guess what I'll do, let's see what the RAM usage looks like. So we've got ourselves, not that one, that's my avatar. So right here, 500 megabytes. So now if I take all of these sprite stacks and say, where is it? Uh, where is it, assets? Right here. If I switch this to 180 cached rotations, what do I get? In terms of RAM usage, I, I'm expecting almost double. I don't know if it's going to be a gigabyte, but we'll see. Okay, it's only another like 200 or something, so it's not too bad. Let's see. Look how much smoother these rotations are, though. The only thing is the load times are going to be longer. Look at how smooth that is. Oh. So let's see the barn. The barn should probably still be noticeable. Okay, yeah. It's noticeable that there's it's caching it, but it's so much smoother. That's nice. Okay. So what I'm thinking is this barn definitely needs to be rotated 180 degrees. And I might put multiple of them on the map, and it needs a hitbox. Uh, but how long have I been streaming for here? I've been streaming for two hours, so I'm thinking I might end the stream here and just kind of do this, the rest of the stuff off stream, because I, I have some other work I gotta do today too. Um, but yeah, we got a barn. Fancy barn. This is the fruits of the magic of Voxel. I'll read chat though. Um. What game feature took the most huge amount of time for me to implement in general? If you're talking about in Pix Carts, uh, actually, I feel like the whole thing is pretty smooth. The, the the most tedious thing is actually creating the maps, like the, the texture for the maps, like um, the erase on, so like this grass below me right here takes forever to do. But generally speaking, the thing that annoys me most time-wise whenever I'm working on something like this is usually the um, asset creation. 
Um, oh, you, code wise, the, the most tedious thing was fixing the networking bugs <laughs> where the server would just suddenly max out its CPU usage or RAM usage or whatever. That was some weird stuff. Had some buffer problems. Um, but that, that should be fixed now. Uh, Fluffy, you're graduating in five weeks. Are you going to do some kind of video to commemorate your graduation? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do one of those videos where I can see. Is getting a computer science degree worth it in 2024 or whatever? I might hold it until next year, so I can say 2024. Um, or maybe I'll just... Oh, what I can do is for this year, I can title it, Is getting a computer science degree worth it? And the next year, I can add to the title in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny cheap way to do it um but uh actually that maybe video might come out next year anyways because I, I still want to do the 10 year thing anyways um but I, I do have some thoughts about that i also want to do a video about how this sounds cool but um yeah I'll, I'll have some video about that no i won't be like talking about what i actually well i won't say which school I went to although it's not too hard to figure out what school i went to but um i'm not gonna go too in detail about my specific school but i think i'll talk about going getting computer science degrees in general um let's see what's the name of this technique of fake 3d again spray stacking yeah uh driving to the barn to get cheese uh yeah hmm it does I feel like it does look for, like hay from here which is good maybe if the bomber were a bit wider that'd be nicer but other than that it's doing fine um you have that tool that gets color from a quick pixel you don't have to guess it on a palette every time Oh, uh, I'm guessing it has. I just didn't bother to look for it. Uh, yeah, um, I, I did mess up the height on it. Uh, baked or fried potatoes? I like fried. As in just fries. Um, I'm not a huge fan of baked or mashed. It's just kind of bland. Uh, it uses PlayStation setup. I'm, I'm using the, the steering wheel. Yeah. As long as it's treated as a controller, you can map it. I'll show you in a, in a moment here what the settings look like. Uh, what about particle effects when one drives into a cheese pile? You should. I, I'm gonna set up a hitbox, so hopefully you can't drive into the barn to begin with. Um. Actually, I'm not. Hmm. I might have to do like some weird custom hitbox thing for the barn just because it's such a weird shape. The thing is I can only work with rectangles, otherwise I'm gonna have weird performance problems, I think. Or, or I'm gonna have to like change some stuff about how that's working. Uh, finally I streamed it is not blocked by a paywall. What? What paywall? I don't I don't put a paywall in front of my stream for you comparing me to other people. I don't know what you're talking about, really. Yeah. Uh, is there a playable version of the game? The stream hides the fact that it feels smooth to you. Um, so I'll, I'll... I'm hoping to do a play test in December. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing public yet. Um, there have been like two or three play tests already. Um, and I mean, there's footage of it on my YouTube channel already. But yeah. Um, caching artifacts kind of feel aesthetically pleasing though. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of like going halfway on some of the graphical stuff because I could like do some fancier stuff with the grass to get the layering correct and stuff, but it's not a huge deal and it's kind of I don't know. It goes into the aesthetic to have those weird visual glitches, kind of I don't know. It's not a huge deal. Um, so I'm thinking I'll just leave it. And as you're racing through, I think the way I have the map set up, most of the time you won't really notice these things, so. Um. Am I going to add mod support? No, because um, I'm going to have to host the servers. 
so and the mods would have to be like mods would be applicable if people could host their own servers now what i might do is i might release a version of the server with no anti-cheat and then people can mod that stuff and host stuff themselves that way the weird thing is though that the server browser depends on my website so it'll like hit an endpoint api endpoint on my website um i actually have i have this whole thing this is the match history this is from the play test you can see the match history from the play test but i i have a lot of stuff running off of my uh the fluffy potato website um and this stuff is uh um like that's where it Browse, what it uses to browse the servers, so I don't wouldn't have much to work off of if people start hosting their own. Maybe it would be included in that list, but that's weird because then people could do questionable things with their servers. I don't know. Um, there's security stuff there. Uh, if people really like that game, I could consider making a version of the server that I send out that just doesn't have anti-cheat, and then people could like make their own anti-cheat plugins and stuff like that, maybe. Um... Although I'm thinking I'm, the anti-cheat I'm going to do is pretty basic, probably. Um, just to hopefully not be too disruptive to other players, ideally. Uh, and then maybe I'll go and do bans. Um, will I make an updated tutorial about pixel art and the design pattern I use? Uh, so, I, wanted, I was actually working on an updated pixel art tutorial. Um... Because there's a lot more things I have to say about pixel art now compared to the last one, which was... I, I said a lot of useful things in that video, but there's some other stuff I, I, I think would be useful to mention. Um, so, it's on my list, kind of, and I actually had a script and I recorded it, and I just didn't get to editing it. That happens with a lot of things, I'll record something, like write a script, record it, and then just not get to the editing part. Um, but I'll... I'll it's on my list. I, it's pretty low priority though, because there's a bunch of other things I need to cover. Because uh, like I, I even wanna before I even do a video like that again, I, I want to get my multiplayer framework out, which means also getting another the multiplayer tutorial out and all this other stuff. And I don't know, there's lots of stuff going on. Uh, what Python framework do I think will, will be the most advanced and used in the next? five to ten years for game development i mean i think most of what we use will probably still have to be pi game there's nothing popping up that's got enough um traction i think to overtake pi game in the near future so I, i'm guessing yeah pi game is going to be pretty well it's going to hang around for a while longer uh there's stuff that might get close but I don't think anything will overtake Python in the near future. Oh, overtake Pygame. Um, you have been a patron sub since early 2021. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> uh, do I have a test for the uh, game there? Oh, yeah. Um, there is one there. Yeah, if you look... I think it might be like... Is it the newest or is it like the second newest post is um, this game? So it's like an older version of that. It's got the server and the client. And there's a lot of spaghetti in the, in the code base, I'll warn you, because uh, as of right now, I'm almost done with, like, code-wise, there's not a whole lot left to do for this game. Um, there's polishing, there's more items, there's menus. There's not a whole lot left. I, I think the game's pretty close to being a game. I don't want to go too fancy at this point with the mechanics and stuff, because um, I don't want this to be too big of a project. Because I would like to actually release it. Um, but yeah. The server and client there so you can mess around with it. Um, you might have to do a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out how it works and stuff. I, there might be some notes there in the post that show you how to do it. Um, but yeah, also thank you for being a patron for so long. I think you might be the longest running patron. Um, well, at least in the um, $7 tier. Uh... You have 20 years of Python experience, you'll manage. But do you have um, experience looking at my code base? That's the problem. Because <laughs> it's, it's pretty rough in there, I think. Um, uh, little NOS bar. I'm not sure what you mean. NOS bar? Uh, 
Um... You thought it would be a good thing to go on with Pixar will be. Uh, oh, an updated to uh, oh, Pixar tutorial. Oh, to go along with my um, six hour tutorial. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the thing is, is if I make a Pixar video, it's going to be like kind of more general concepts. It's not going to be actually going through examples too much of actually drawing things. Because, I don't know. Do, from the actual drawing perspective, when you're getting into like the shapes and just drawing things like shape wise well um that's something that i can't really i, I don't know how to verbally teach it so the, the things that i can teach with pixel art well um look are going to be color i think and just like um maybe composition and uh clusters and some larger scale things. So there's some like tips on there, but there, one of the most important aspects, which is just being able to get your shapes right and everything, is not something I can give too much info on. So um, it, I, if it, I'm releasing some kind of thing for Pixar, it's not gonna be you look at that and that's all you need. You're gonna need some practice and other stuff. Maybe watch other people do some drawing, which I mean, there are my live streams, you can look at that or even my, um uh time lapses you can see some good examples of me drawing stuff um so you can kind of see the process um all right hello he says unfortunately i'm getting close to ending the stream uh, but yeah i did say i would show the settings here for the controllers so i'm gonna show that and then i think i'll end the stream so if i go over to settings here i have controller bindings and uh yeah so it's like um is controllers are broken i always i don't know if this is just an sdl thing but um the controllers are broken into like the axes the buttons and the hats so the hats are not supported right now um and i think so the turn and scroll have to be on an axis which means you have to have a joystick to play this game and some, enough buttons oh and i do have hat support because I have a uh, focus on the hat. I forgot I added that. That was the last thing I did, I think. And I didn't talk about it really because it's just like a convenience thing that no one really cares about. It doesn't have anything visual. Um, so yeah, you can just like assign to different buttons and axes here. So I can like switch this to axis too. So I can, I just put it on my right joystick instead of my left, but I can just like do whatever. So. You can really bind whatever you want here. And then also, um, the other thing about this thing is I have a huge database, which I can show you, of different controllers and their layouts. So hopefully it can automatically detect and generate your configuration here. Um, actually, I should probably like release this as a library or something for people to use just because I'm um, not that, that one. So here's the custom bindings. So these are some custom bindings. Um, so I think three of these are actually for switches or for the joy cons so i think like two of these are just individual joy cons and then the last one's them together and then this one i think is my actual setup that i mainly use which is just a logitech was it f whatever it was it's the wired version of the o the, the one from ocean gate <laughs> um <laughs> that's that's what this one is um so I have my custom bindings here. So I'll I'll delete this one right when I release it. The the switch the the Joy-Con ones from the David from the database I have are incorrect. So I had to override those ones. But some of those are actually just custom. Uh, where's my actual database? It's not here. Is it? Oh, it's here. Ah, uh, yes, this is the database. Look at this. Here are all the controllers in the database. There are. 1,900 supported controllers, or not supported, I support everything in theory, um, or almost everything in theory. The, the, uh, this is not 9,000, no, 9, 1,900 that have, um, the mappings in the database so that it should hopefully work just first try. The only thing is that, um, well, first of all, you have to have your enough buttons and joysticks because some things are just buttons that don't have like a, an axis or whatever um and the other thing is um 
some of these mappings are wrong as I found out with the Joy-Cons. So I don't know what percentage of these are actually correct. Um, hopefully it is generally correct, but um, I guess I'll find out. It's not too big of a deal for people to fix this stuff though, but yeah. You should be able to use something like a steering wheel with this game, hopefully. Um, let's see. Uh, G twenty nine is PlayStation input. Like I said, it should work. Um, keyboard support is already there. That's how people in the playtest are mostly playing it. I just completely prefer the controller. And I mean, if you look in the settings here, you get there's also the keyboard bindings. I spent a lot of time working on the settings for this game. There's a lot of random stuff. So there's the keyboard bindings. So there's all this. But driving with the keyboard's rough because just you have to like tap the like constantly tap the 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 turning keys to get your turns right um it's it's a bit funky uh did i write all that or copy and paste it the the um the control database there, there there's a list online it's for sdl um it's just control database for sdl and at the top of the file it said where i got it from um what is pignet pignet is my networking framework but unfortunately there's already a networking framework for Pygame called Pignet, which is confusing. So when I actually r update, like create, I guess, a version two of this networking framework, I'm going to call it Shobnet um, because Pignet's already taken name. Um, the reason I was I called it Pignet is, at first is because my framework is called Pigpen. So Pignet just kind of works. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, like I said, someone took it. You can look on... Um, the Python package index, and you'll see um, there, there's already a project called Pignet. I have no idea uh, w the extent to which it works, but it's supposedly a networking framework for Pygame. It's funny that that's exactly what my Pignet is as well, but yeah, different thing. Um, will I release a video on caching by any chance? Uh, not really, because it's not too complicated. Uh, you literally just pre-render well for surf like for images and stuff. You just pre-render your images and store them in a dictionary based on however you want to look them up. I might do like a general video about optimization and it would be like a subsection in that video, but like a dedicated video for caching, I don't think is really necessary. Um, do walls and fences also use sprite stacking? Yes. Do I plan on making a basic brick breaker? Um, like I, I don't. Uh, maybe I would do a tutorial with it someday, but I don't plan on it. I made one like in my first year of game development, but I don't really have a reason to make one right now unless I'm making a tutorial. Uh, how about close to my finishing this? Um, so right now, I'm in here. I have my. I'll put my. Um, where is it? I have a list on my Discord server about the of the things that I have to do before the next playtest. So if I look right here, we got ourselves. Uh, here's here's where we're at. So I'm working on track polish and hazards. So right now I'm polishing the first track, and then I'm gonna add the cows, and then with the hazards, and then that will be done. Um, and uh, yeah, so. This is one of the bigger things that I have left, so I'll do this. And then I want three new items, uh, four new tracks. That the, the, This is the other big thing. So the, well, the big things here, actually a lot of the stuff left is big stuff, I guess. Um, so this is what I have left before the next play test. And then the next play test, well, after the next play test, the idea is that I mostly just have to do eight more tracks. And then um, hopefully the guy um he's composing right now we'll stick around and do um songs for all the tracks but um and then there'll probably be a few more items before release as well um and then maybe i'll do like something where you can um i don't know if it'll be like kind of like a time trials thing or what i need something so that people can play the game when they're by themselves or have something to do when they're in a server by themselves and hoping someone else joins otherwise uh, no one's just going to sit in the lobby waiting for someone else to happen to come in and get the thing going because 
Um, there has to be something entertaining to do while you're waiting for people to hopefully show up because a lot of t people will probably just open the game, see zero people in a lobby and decide to close it. So there needs to be a way to keep some amount of people in as long as possible. So that's one one of the big things I have to do before release and I'll probably have to do more into cheat stuff. But I'm hoping first half of next year it'll be out, but who knows. Stuff has been chaos for me lately. So we'll see. Uh, how do I stay focused and motivated along... Uh, uh, I'm assuming that's supposed to be a long, not a long, um, a long time in my projects. Um, so, I mean, historically, I haven't really stuck with projects for that long. Um, I think... Pix cards is actually at this point probably one of my longest running projects, even though I haven't put that much time into it. I started it, what was it? In the summer. Like, I think early summer, like May or something. Or was it April? It might have been April. And we're in like November now, so it's been over six months and I'm still working on it. Um, I've had to take a lot of breaks because of other stuff going on, but I, I've stuck to it. But um, I, I think that's a thing now where I'm really starting to get into sticking around with projects. Um, and it's a similar thing with my contracting project right now, which is like a year long. Um, but I mean, a, a lot of it's kind of discipline. I think early on, like, especially in, like, yeah, early on, you're improving so fast that any project over a couple months long is probably not worth continuing at a, after a certain point because you get, um, you just get, like you, you can make something so much better by the time you've gotten a couple months in. Um, and for me, a lot of that is more on the artistic side than the programming side. My programming skills have been pretty much, I mean, I can do pretty much whatever I want to do in terms of games, and it's been that way for uh, years. So the main thing is just artistically um, getting better and I, I guess also from like a technical art standpoint, so like um, how you mix the art in programming stuff, so just ideas for new visual effects type things. Um, so uh, with those things, the game types of games I can look, uh, the quality of games I can make keeps improving. And I feel like right now is probably where um, I'm just now getting to the point where my rate of improvement is stable enough to to the point where I can just kind of work on a game for maybe a year or so. Um, but, and the other thing with Pix Carts is that I'm not really trying graphically, you could say. So like, I'm not, I'm, I've am i been pretty sloppy with the artwork on Pix Carts and I, I don't want to spend too much time worrying about that. Just visually, I'm not too worried about this game. Um, it's not like, Usually with my other like 2D games, um, I, I try pretty hard on the graphics, but on this one, I'm just kind of laid back, focusing on the networking and just the mechanics and stuff, and um, yeah, and the tracks and everything. So yeah. Um, have I been a game developer for a long time? Uh, don't you want to switch to game engines sometimes instead of coding everything yourself? Well, I have pretty much everything I need already pre-built, so I don't, it's not, I don't really get much out of switching to an engine unless I'm going like significantly out of the scope of what, um, of the types of games that I've already made. So like specifically with 3D stuff, um, it's worth going to an engine, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with Pygame because I get to use Python. Uh, but yeah, I've been making games for like 10 years now. My shared tutorial doesn't work with Max. Uh, I, yeah, I need to add a pinned comment. I, I have the stuff that needs to be added for that. I just need, I keep forgetting to add it to the pinned comment. Um, Max do a lot of stuff differently when it comes to OpenGL. And actually, they deprecated it as well, so you're not even supposed to really be using it with Max anymore. They want you using something else. Uh, so it's like a weird situation. And just in general, I'm not a fan of Apple's stuff. So... Um, it doesn't bother me too much that that's the problem. Um, because, I don't know, Apple's been pretty hostile towards developers for a while, I feel like. Uh,
talking about the programming side of your work, how do you know before which way to take to make the game sufficient? Wait. Oh, I'm guess I I think you're asking how do I know like before I start writing stuff how, um how to approach designing stuff to make it optimized. Um so what I uh a, a lot of it is intuitive. So I've been working with Pygame for so long that I have just a good mental estimate of how long everything takes or like how costly performance wise everything is. Um, and I know what needs to be optimized where sometimes it's like, I'm like iffy on whether or not something needs to be optimized and I'll just kind of save it for later and just kind of design things to be open towards that. Um, but I'm, I feel like that's something that just has to come with experience. Um, I mean, you could have someone who is experienced just look at your stuff and say, it's to tell you what your expectations should be and what types of things you will have to optimize and how you will have to optimize this. That, that's the, um, that's where like, uh, something like consulting would be useful. Like that's why people hire, hire consultants or one of the reasons why people might hire a consultant is because they have that knowledge can, can set that direction. But, um, yeah, that's, that's something where you just kind of need skill. There's no simple solution. And that's why consultants are uh, um, so expensive. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like optimizing wise, there, there are several te techniques. And like I said, I might do a video about that of um, what types of techniques you can use. Um, so you can learn those on a case by case basis. Uh, average mark price in 2023. Two with a lot of zeros. Oh, well. I actually have like an. I have like, yeah, I have an, a MacBook Air in in my bookshelf, just sitting there in case I need to release something on Mac. Um, but I don't actually use it. I got it for free. Um. Yeah, I have like how many laptops do I have? I have one. I have one like trashy one that's like. 200 bucks from like 2015 like a barely running thing is great for testing like stress testing my games to see if they'll run on pretty much everything um <laughs> so that one's nice to have um because it can barely it can't run most applications not even games it can't run most applications i feel like um so if my games can run on that i'm doing pretty well so that's one of the things i like test on i have my actual laptop i was working on a while from like i don't know 2014 to 2018 I have my original laptop, which I had from like, I don't know, 2012 to 2014. I have the MacBook Air. I have my current actual laptop, which is actually kind of nice. I paid like $600 for it in 2020. Um, so that's wait, one, two, three, four, five. I have five laptops. That's crazy. And between the laptops, I have um, Mac, Linux, and Windows. And then, of course, I have my desktop computer, which I'm probably going to build a new desktop computer soon. So if you count my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to end up with um, eight computers soon. I think, yeah, next next year I'm going to end up with eight computers. I'll have my five laptops and Raspberry Pi and two desktop computers. Because I'm going to keep this one in case... Um, uh, like, I, I think I'll, I'm going to separate my like work in... I'm, gonna, I'm probably going like, to yeah, separate my work and others uh, in like... I'm not sure how I'm going to split it, but I'm going to uh, split my stuff so that I've got some stuff on one computer and some stuff on another, probably. Because um, right now I actually do have, like, uh, things that could dox me on this computer, which is kind of iffy with streaming. So I have to be pretty careful, but it would be nice if I didn't have that stuff on this computer so I can stream and not worry about accidentally doxing myself. <laughs> um, so... Uh, that, that's something I'm looking forward to. And that's one of the... That's a very minor reason why I'm a bit more hesitant to stream right now um, compared to what I'm planning for next year. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, how did I get it for free? Um, I got it from my father. He it, like he bought a new um, MacBook Air or whatever. So, he just gave me his old one. And that that's how I um, got the really bad like two hundred dollar one as well. So um if you have family members who are buying 
laptops and stuff, they'll, they might give you some free stuff. And I mean, I got my first laptop for free as well. Um, I inherited it from my grandparents. Uh, how am I going to run the servers? I run my own VPSs. You'd like to make an online game, but it's too expensive to pay for servers and you don't want to use a PC. Um, I forgot. So Steam, I think, has some like weird peer-to-peer -peer thing. They have some kind of weird setup where I think where you don't have to pay for servers. Um, but the I think what it is is it's like they use like proxy servers or something to make it peer to peer. But then the actual like um what would be kind of the host like from a processing standpoint is one of the players. Um, so I think if you're working with um Steam's like APIs and stuff, you can uh get basically online games for free. Uh, you, but there are, there are limitations if you're doing just like peer to peer stuff though. So, um, yeah, that is an option. So, so like, actually for this type of game for picks carts, I can, uh, except for like the, the, I guess leaderboards and stuff, um, and the ranks or whatever. Um, I could, I could theoretically run this on just steam and not pay for servers, but it would take some work to set that up. So that, that is an option if you don't want to pay for that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, does my PigNet model module use TCP or, or... Well, you said TDP. It's TCP um, or UDP. Uh, and yeah, I use TCP. I, I talked about it in uh, my latest video. What is PigPen? Uh, that is my uh, framework that I wrote myself. You won't find anything about it online. Um, you can see it in moon rabbit collection and i'm not sure there might be it's funny <laughs> i wrote that framework i enter one game jam with it and i win two metal i got one two medals from the ludum day the first time i used it that was hilarious um and it was because i would not have won those medals i don't think if i didn't use my framework uh but yeah there might be some notes like like comments in the pig pen files in the collection saying when it becomes open source um so like what it is is there's a weird license on it where it's like this stuff is open source but only if the date is uh like, i think it's june or july 2024 so it's like next year um even if i forget to release it you can just go into moon rabbit collection pull it out and use it but there's lots of bugs on there so uh, what happens is i'll be working on something and I'll, I'll just randomly find a bug and i'm like oh okay and i have to just go and fix it so it's it's more of like a framework specifically for me. So it doesn't help other people too much. It might be a good reference, but I wouldn't like depend on it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a question? Can you overlap two Pygame surfaces to create a new combined Pygame surface? Well, that's what blitting does. You're putting one surface on top of another. Now, if you're talking about merging them where it's like they're only partially overlapping, um, you might want to make like a bigger one that you put both of them onto. But then you have to decide what do you want all that extra space to be. Do you want it to be transparent? If you want it to be transparent, you make um, a surface with SRC alpha, so it defaults to all transparent. Then you blit your two surfaces onto it. Uh, the Pigpen framework costed all my games on the official Pygame website. Well, no, that was not because of Pigpen. That was because of Pygame CE. So Pigpen does not depend on Pygame CE. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I added some stuff recently to newer versions of it where it might. Um, but at least in the original version, it did not. Uh, Moon Rabbit Collection will run on both Pygame and Pygame CE. The only reason that I got in trouble with Illume was because I used Pygame CE. Um, and the code that I posted onto Pygame's website is code that runs in Pygame. So it's not even like I... I I took something that only runs in Pygame CE and posted it on the Pygame website. Cause I could see if I could see him. Well, for, I don't see why he, he would ban all my stuff if I did, did that, but or I don't see why he could reasonably ban all my stuff. If I did, did, that, did that, but I could see why he would reasonably remove like a specific game. If the code that I posted does not run in Pygame, but the code does run in Pygame. The only reason that he went in, um, banned me was and removed all my stuff was because my um uh games were 
Um, what well, was because it was built with it, and I don't. I'm not sure how he found out. So it might have been someone told him. It might have been he was watching my live stream and saw me mention that I was using Pygame CE. Or he really dug through the files to figure out that I was using Pygame CE, which is, um, I'm not sure how likely that is because it's, uh, it's a bit of work to figure that out. Because if you look at the import statements in the code, it's not like you do import Pygame CE, you do import Pygame. So you have to look in like special places in the build to see what was actually used, and I'm not, I'm actually not too sure where where to work look myself. So yeah. Um. Did I see the Pi Game Community Iceberg? Is that like a meme, like an iceberg meme, where it's like the stuff on the top is the thing everyone knows, and the stuff on the bottom is the thing that a very few people know? I I have not seen that, but it might be funny to see. Um. Yeah. Just post it in the um post it in the memes channel on my Discord server and I'll see it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I've been going for almost three hours, so I think I'm gonna end the stream. Uh thanks for coming everyone. I, I added the barn to the game. Didn't get a whole lot done because I, I mean I spent most of the time just talking to you guys, but uh, that's not how these streams go. That's why I don't stream all of my development work or else I wouldn't get hardly anything done. <laughs> uh but yeah, hopefully I mean oh, I don't I, I don't know if I'll stream more, much more this year. I might get a couple in, but next year, the stream quality should be much better. But yeah, uh, ending the stream here. I'll see you guys later. Bye.